Right now, a wild weekend of weather leaves one city under a state of emergency. What conditions you can expect later tonight. Plus, state Democrats discuss their plans on what they would do with the state surplus. Also, as demand for COVID-19 vaccines decreases, what does that mean for the supply? What public health Madison Dane County is saying about ordering more doses? Just knowing that I had the power now, like he doesn't have that power over me anymore. And later, for the first time, an Oregon high schooler tells us why she believes the system failed her not once, but twice. Welcome to News 3 Now at 6. We begin first with breaking news right now. The district attorney has cleared three Madison police officers of any wrongdoing when one of them fired his gun at a person threatening murder-suicide last November. The officers responded to a home on the east side after receiving word that a suicidal man was threatening to kill his girlfriend. District Attorney Ishmael Ozan says the officers were justified in using deadly force. In this case, firing at the man after he refused to drop his handgun and raised in the direction of the officers. An earlier attempt to subdue him with a taser failed. The man instead turned the weapon on himself and he died of that self-inflicted gunshot. Switching gears here, it looks like we're going to have to wait just a little bit longer for the spring season this year. After temperatures got into the 50s on Saturday, then Mother Nature decided winter just not over yet. Let's check your certified most accurate forecast with Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti. Well, Charlotte, we actually had a taste of spring on Saturday with severe weather and even a tornado in Stoughton. And then we had snow last night and Monday morning. Let's start off by taking a look at the live view from the, or well, but we had the Edgewater sky cam up. We had uh, some clouds, but you can see on Dabbler track, all the precipitation is out over Lake Michigan or in lower Michigan and moving away from us. So right now uh, we should actually see the skies clear out later on tonight. High temperatures today only around freezing and that was because of the snow cover and the snow that's on the ground and right now temperatures are in the upper 20s to lower 30s but you factor in the winds and the winds are not that strong we're still seeing wind chills right now in the upper teens to the lower 20s by tomorrow morning with mostly clear skies and that fresh snow cover temperatures will drop to about 15 here in Madison tomorrow look for a high of 38 under mostly sunny skies but that snow cover will keep our temperatures down for a couple of days and we may add to the snow on the ground on Thursday I'll have more on that in the forecast in just a few minutes Stoughton is under a state of emergency today after a tornado and strong winds tore through the area Saturday night. According to Stoughton's mayor, no one was injured. Citywide brush collection will begin on March 14th. All brush must be outside by 7 a.m. on that day. Residents who want to haul their own brush can bring it to the city's yard waste site beginning March 8th through the 13th from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. No permit is required. The city also will speak with the National Weather Service as to why sirens did not go off to alert citizens of the tornado. State legislative leaders joined the Democratic Party of Wisconsin today to discuss the positive impact Governor Evers' budget surplus proposal would have on Wisconsin residents. The governor's plan directs taxpayer dollars back to Wisconsin families now to help them pay bills and address rising costs. The plan would give a $150 tax refund for every filer and their dependents. It would also expand the child tax Democrat the child would also expand the child tax. Democrats are also looking to spend some of the surplus on schools, providing a $111 million for the UW system, $28 million for tech colleges, and more than $600 million for K-12 schools. Ben Winkler, the chair of Wisconsin's Democratic Party, says giving the money back to the people of Wisconsin will also help the state's economy. He also says the GOP is holding taxpayer dollars hostage. If Wisconsinites money just collects dust for the next year, it'll be on Republicans to explain why they've chosen to put their self-serving political agenda above helping families put food on the table. Republicans say they would rather use the money to give Wisconsinites a tax cut in 2023. Wisconsin bars, restaurants, and small businesses are getting some help in time for tax season as they work to recover from the COVID-19 pandemic. Governor Evers signed two bills into law at Cooper's Tavern today. One is designed to assure businesses that federal COVID-19 relief funds they receive are exempt from state taxes. The other bill increases the amount of ordinary income that may be offset by capital losses from $500 to $3,000. Both bills passed with bipartisan support.
Madison police is searching for a 13 year old boy who was last seen on March 1st. Sebastian Murray was last seen along the 1000 block of North Thompson Drive wearing a red mask, gray hoodie, black coat and black jeans. Police say they are confident that he is still in the area. Officers are trying to reconnect him with his dad. He's not believed to be in any danger. Sebastian also has ties to Illinois. The family of a missing UW lacrosse student is offering a $15,000 reward for information that helps them find him. 25-year-old Hamoud Fa'al was last seen February 20th walking alone near the lacrosse center. The Sun Prairie High School graduate is set to graduate from UW lacrosse in May. A GoFundMe account has raised more than $20,000 to help Fa'al's family create a reward, hire a private detective, and put up billboards. Friends and family of Quadron Wilson are sending a direct message to local leaders at the Capitol. Today, they gave letters to elected officials with multiple demands, including the arrest of the DCI agents they say are responsible for shooting Wilson and making the investigation more transparent. They're also asking for Wilson to be sent back to UW Hospital for treatment on what he says is an infection. Coming up tonight at 10, we'll hear much more from Wilson's family and supporters, and we'll share what information the sheriff has released so far. Well, as COVID cases continue to drop, so has the demand for COVID vaccines, leaving many doses on the shelves. Last week, Dane County has a whole administered around 2,500 doses. That's according to Public Health Madison, Dane County. Well, just a few weeks ago, about 4,500 doses were administered. PHMDC Communications Director Morgan Fink says the vaccines can last at least 10 weeks on the shelf. So um, giving that time frame, you know, that 10 week window of how long the vaccine lasts, um, we'll have a pretty good idea within that shipment of if we'll need that for the next shipment. Today, they ordered 220 doses of the Pfizer vaccine for 5 to 11-year-olds. Ukrainian negotiators say a third of the talks with the Russians have yielded some progress on civilian evacuations. So far, failed ceasefire attempts have upset efforts to create safe corridors. The United Nations says more than 1.7 million people have fled Ukraine since the invasion began. The Pentagon has ordered 500 more U.S. troops to Europe to bolster NATO's eastern flank. Wisconsin Treasurer Sarah Godlewski is calling on the state to shed any investments with Russian entities in response to the Ukraine invasion. She wants the State Investment Board to identify any direct Russian holdings and make a divestment plan. The Investment Board's main responsibility is managing the state employee retirement account. About $90 million of the $147 billion fund is in Russian-linked assets. External managers outside of the board's control manage more than 80% of those accounts. Still ahead, Dane County is looking to give people some help doing their taxes. Plus, the Madison Bee Cycles are coming back this month, how they're looking to bring some positivity to the community. You are watching News 3 Now at 6. What you see is important. How you see is important too. Get personalized care from experienced optometrists at Shopco Optical. Better eye care, you'll see. Enjoy great savings this month and get 30% off a complete pair of glasses. This is the house that angels built. Attic Angels Senior Living Community is built on a foundation of authentic local care. A framework for living well. Windows to take in the beautiful future. And it's crowned by the pride that one's home is one's castle. This is the house that angels built. Attic Angel Community. Independent homes and four levels of assisted living. Built with the help of angels. Water is one of nature's most beautiful and life-sustaining resources. At no fault of their own. Many Wisconsin utility customers are facing a shutoff to their water service. This leaves them without the one life-giving resource we all take for granted. And those hardest hit are on fixed incomes, juggling multiple temporary jobs, or those who lost full-time jobs in sectors hardest hit by the pandemic. 
If someone you care about needs a hand up, your local Wisconsin energy and emergency rental assistance providers are working together to keep you safely in your home and your water, heat, and power on. If you are in danger of losing your water service, call 833-H2O-WISC, 833-426-9472. You may not ask for it, but we're here to help. What you see is important. That makes quality eye care important, too. Get personalized care from experienced optometrists at Shopco Optical. Better eye care. You'll see. Shopco Optical recommends a comprehensive eye exam annually. Schedule your exam at shopco.com. With spring on the horizon, the Madison B-Cycles will be back out on the streets later this month. They're getting ready for what they're calling the biggest year ever. The Art Bike program is also returning for a second year with the goal to bring positive change to the area beyond the bike path. And they're looking for new people to sponsor the Art Bikes in 2022. One of those sponsors is Curtis Hall of TDS, who is excited about the positive difference already being seen in the community. And for him, it's personal. It was important for me because I wanted to support Mentoring Positives, which is a local nonprofit um, that makes a huge difference in the community with um, at-risk youth and troubled adolescents. And it kind of hits home to me because I was raised in foster care and we didn't have a lot of programs like that. And so it gave me the opportunity to use the B-Cycle platform and the TDS platform to make a difference in the community that I can't necessarily make as a regular person, but I can through the program. Last year, Madison B-Cycle's art bike program brought awareness to 18 local causes with the help of 13 local sponsors and 21 local artists, helping raise thousands of dollars in donations to the causes represented on the bikes. Dane County is offering free tax preparation help by appointment through April 15th. Appointments can be scheduled at the Richard Dealey Tax Center. The center has moved locations to 2238 Park Street here in Madison. Appointments are in person with a certified volunteer tax preparer. She says the system failed her twice. Now she's sharing her story with us. Coming up, News 3 Now investigates, looks at how schools in our area are now handling situations of sexual violence as more students speak out. Plus, as we deal with the snow from today, what does the rest of the week have in store for us? Gary will have your complete forecast when we come back. Link's device stops reflux by using magnets to strengthen the muscle at the end of the esophagus and this prevents acid from flowing from the stomach back into the esophagus. Stoughton Health, creating excellence together. From working out to catching up and of course game night, your home is the groundwork for all of life's awesome moments. This is Tom Coyle. My family and I say thank you. We're proud to have been a part of this community for 77 years. And during our 77th anniversary event, carpet installation is just $77. Coil Carpet One Floor and Home. Beautiful, made affordable. Locally owned and operated since 1945. Scoving Cars is having a huge winter sale with the largest selection of vehicles under $15,995 or $249 per month. That's right, don't miss out on our winter sale with the best selection of SUVs, cars, or vans under $15,995 or $249 per month. We have one of the largest selections of vehicles in Dane County with over 500 vehicles in stock. So just come on in and ask for me, Crystal the Pistol, Govin. Go to Govin Cars East or West. You gotta go to Govin. GovinCars.com For six bucks every day. Crispy fish with that spicy kick. Two of those things for just six bucks. Arby's, we have the meat. Can you be free of hair breakage worries? We invited Maho to see for herself that Dove Breakage Remedy gives damaged hair the strength it needs. Even with repeated combing, hair treated with Dove shows 97% less breakage. Strong hair with Dove Breakage Remedy. Number one beauty brand not tested on animals. Broadway's Tony-winning best musical is Dear Evan Hansen. Dear Evan Hansen, May 10th to 15th at Overture Center. Find your tickets at Overture.org today. 
Hi, I'm Dr. Aaron Schwab, General Surgeon at Stoughton Health. If you suffer from reflux, please join us for our upcoming seminar on the Lynx device, a new and innovative treatment to stop reflux. Stoughton Health, creating excellence together. First came the sexual assault. Then for this Oregon teen, she says the system failed her. We first told her story last fall. Now she's sitting down with us for the first time, detailing what she says was a system failure in response to her public YouTube video. As schools across our county reckon with their policies for handling sexual violence. Investigative reporter Naomi Coles has the story. Three years ago, a moment that's changing Bree Opliger's life to this day. I kept saying that I wasn't in the mood or wasn't ready. She was 14 at a party with her 17-year-old boyfriend. She said no, he didn't listen. I didn't really tell anyone about it until a couple of months later when I found out that another girl had gotten assaulted by the same guy. After doing that, that's when we ended up reporting it to our counselors. What happened next is what drove Brie years later to tape the YouTube video when she first went public with her story last fall. I want the school to wake up. She, the other victim, and the school counselor all sat down with the then school resource officer at Oregon High School. She says the officer made comments about her abuser sleeping worse than her at night and would later tell her it was too late to press charges. That made me feel hopeless, but also it didn't really give me any closure. So I feel like that was a very important part of the like what I needed at that time. Fast forward to today. After Bree went locally viral with her story, Oregon police reopened the investigation. We got the records. It wasn't too late to press charges, but this time Bree says she'd come to terms. Kind of get closure. I, w I wouldn't really call it closure, but I w I've had time to sit with it. I kind of came to terms with the fact that there probably wouldn't be any evidence of it happening. The real issue for her, how the officer had handled her case and how she says neither he nor the school fully gave her the information she needed at the time. They didn't really explain it very well and that kind of scared me away from like making my mind up right on the spot. So she filed a civil complaint about the officer who is still with the department. Days ago, the chief emailed Bree. Her complaints unsubstantiated. The chief said there wasn't enough evidence the officer told her that she couldn't press charges or that he had made inappropriate comments to her during the meeting. You could tell that they definitely took the officer's side and it was definitely a biased investigation. The chief said in her email that the core evidence, the body cam footage of the interview, has since been purged. When we reached out for comment, the chief sent a statement nearly identical to the one she issued three months ago, saying they support victims but encourage them to come forward as soon as possible. What we want is really clear definition. Free isn't the only one seeking change in how schools and police handle sexual violence between students. High schools in Madison and Sun Prairie last fall staged walkouts in protest, and now schools are responding. It is um, a really wonderful thing to watch students advocate for themselves and the services that they want and need. Dane Pelabon from the Rape Crisis Center says they're now working with many schools in the area to respond with better education, resources, and policies. So there is an awakening that is happening. It started with the Me Too movement, um, and you know we had a, a, a time period in there where most of what we were concerned about is COVID, but as the students are back in schools and, and as the problems that, that have been there all along are, are, are having light shed on them, um, we are really seeing an activation in a new way. Bree didn't have the education she needed at 14 to take power over her choices. That's what the Rape Crisis Center is trying to bring to schools. But justice can also look different for everyone. Our concern is what happens with the survivors of sexual violence. Um, the school's concern is what happens on both sides. Um, so sometimes that is a delicate balance and sometimes uh, justice doesn't look like how a survivor may want it to look. For Bree, still healing after the trauma of sitting next to her abuser in class and watching him graduate without repercussions. I'm taking back my story. She's in this now for everyone. I don't want it to happen to anyone else, so I'm just going to keep, keep pushing, keep going until I get the response that I want. The school tells me they've partnered with the Rape Crisis Center and have done survivor circles, school assemblies, and student counseling after this event. For Bree, the investigation might be closed and her complaints unsubstantiated, but the story is not over. She says she's done some volunteering for the Rape Crisis Center, and given how impactful this assault was, she's now considering whether helping survivors may become part of her career. For more details, you can check online later tonight at channel3000.com.
Let's shift back to weather where temperatures look to be warming up for tomorrow. Here's Gary with your complete forecast. But I wish they could get a little warmer. Unfortunately, the snow on the ground is going to keep our temperatures down. Three things you need to know in the forecast. That snow cover will keep our temperatures in the 30s for tomorrow, probably only mid-30s for Wednesday. We do have the potential for some snow on Thursday and Thursday night. Right now, it doesn't look like a major system, but we'll keep an eye on that. And then dry weather for this weekend. The cold weather will continue through Saturday, but then after that, we'll see a warm-up on Sunday, and next week looks to be milder. Doppler track right now, you can still see the flurries of snow uh, coming down across Door County and through much of uh, lower Michigan. That is from mainly lake effect snow, but this is a different map than what we saw uh, Saturday. These are all the severe weather reports, and of course there was the Stoughton tornado report, but a lot of wind and hail damage reports. Most of those were farther to our south and to our west, and of course the line of tornado reports across central Iowa, and now they have snow on top of that. They're just like Stoughton, getting snow on top of the tornado damage less and 36 hours later, and that covered much of uh, the central and uh, southern portions of Iowa. But you can see much of the Midwest right now is snow covered. That's not going to last for long. I think temperatures will warm up to the point where a lot of that snow will melt by the middle part of next week. But right now, with that snow cover on the ground, temperatures are mainly in the 20s and 30s, even down toward the Ohio River. So this, the cold air has spread southward quite a bit. The jet stream has pushed a cold front down to our south and east, and now the warm and humid air is across the southeastern part of the country where there are showers and thunderstorms, some severe weather reports there severe thunderstorm watches into parts of uh, Pennsylvania up toward New York State and then uh, farther to the south the potential for some heavy rains and some uh, localized flooding but around our part of the Midwest is just the cold air that's moved in and we'll zoom in the clouds are actually starting to clear out to the west temperatures 20s and uh, low 30s for the most part and the wind chills right now not too bad temperatures compared to 24 hours ago though are starting to warm up a little bit to the west but that's just an improvement a little bit over what we had today. And then on future track, you can see skies stay mainly clear overnight. Tomorrow, lots of sunshine. Winds out of the southwest. Here comes a cold front from the northwest, and that drops temperatures a little bit from Wednesday. And then as we head toward Thursday, we have some snow in the forecast. This is early in the morning. By mid-afternoon, most of southern Wisconsin will be seeing some snow. Uh, some of the future track computer models show that snow mainly Thursday into Thursday night, and then out of here by early on Friday morning. As far as the snowfall amounts are concerned, uh, right now, one of the computer models has most of the accumulating snow down to the south. The other a little bit farther north. But right now, we're thinking probably a one to two inch accumulation, mainly from Madison southward. So for tomorrow, look for mostly sunny skies, but it will remain chilly. High temperature at 38 degrees. And as we look at the 7 to 10 day forecast, 34 on Wednesday. That's snow on Thursday. Again, an inch or two mainly uh, from Madison southward, if we have it at all. And then after that, look for temperatures to warm up as we head into next week. In fact, precipitation then will mostly be in the form of rain. And coming up in sports, the Badgers are heading to Boston. And what the moment was like when they saw Wisconsin pop up on the bracket. That's next on News 3-9. News 3 Now First Warn Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Create your perfect room for relaxing, entertaining, and more with patio enclosures. Right now, get up to $6,500 off your sunroom. Plus, enjoy exceptional financing. Call today. Patio enclosures. Now at Menard, save big money and get 11% off everything. Formula Shell Motor Oil provides value and performance in a trusted brand. A quart is $2.29 after 11% rebate. Attract a wide variety of birds to your feeder, including cardinals, robins, and sparrows with Enchanted Garden Wild Bird Seed. This mix contains a blend of seeds and corn. A 40-pound bag is $11.99 after 11% rebate. Get 11% off everything at Menard's. Save big money. Guys, if you're suffering from erectile dysfunction, Peak Performance for Men has a natural solution that can help you today. That's right. Stop wasting money on pills and inferior technology that hurts and just masks your ED. Fix it for good. The best part? Our ED treatment is non-invasive, painless, and you can get back to your natural functionability after just a few short in-office sessions. Call us today and mention this ad and your initial consultation is free. We are Madison's trusted specialist and only national erectile dysfunction provider. Call Peak Performance for Men today. He should have used his power to serve Wisconsin. Instead, Ron Johnson served himself. An investigation found that Ron Johnson pushed through a special tax loophole that benefited his own family's business. After the loophole became law, Ron Johnson cashed out of the company for $5 million. 
Ron Johnson has doubled his wealth since taking office. Look up the facts and tell Ron Johnson to stop passing tax laws that benefit himself. Why would Standard Optical choose a spokesbird? They're not your typical eye care company. I'm not your typical penguin. We're a team. There's no I in eye care. Wait. <laughs> Get two pairs of glasses plus a free eye exam, anti-glare lenses, and same-day service for only $79. Create your perfect room for relaxing, entertaining, and more with patio enclosures. Right now, get up to $6,500 off your sunroom. Plus, enjoy exceptional financing. Call today. Patio enclosures. You just found out your bank account was hacked. What do you do? Our Call for Action expert shares important tips to help you clean up your mess and recover your money. And we're keeping an eye on a system to bring more wintry conditions to southern Wisconsin. We'll have the details tomorrow morning from 4.30 to 7. Yesterday's loss to Nebraska was ugly. You have the top team in the Big Ten losing to the worst team in the Big Ten at home on senior day with a chance to win the program's first outright Big Ten title since 2015. And it looked like it would happen until Wisconsin went cold. And I'm talking ice cold from the floor. In the final five minutes and 48 seconds, the Badgers didn't make a field goal. And during those nine straight misses, they watched a nine-point lead turn into a one-point loss. Tyler had one, Steve had one, Jacoby had one, Chucky had one. I mean, with a six, eight, nine point lead. Um, yeah, I mean, he, they, we got the ball in high percentage areas and, and um, didn't, didn't put the ball in the basket. Johnny Davis was named a first team All-American by the Sporting News this morning. The Badgers sophomore has 15 20 point games this season and leads Wisconsin in points and rebounds. Now Davis left the Cole Cerner at walking boot yesterday. Greg Gard said after the game he's optimistic he'll play in the Big Ten tournament. Badgers won't play until Friday. The Wisconsin women's hockey team is on to the big dance for the ninth straight season. And unlike the last couple of years, it was a different feel around Selection Sunday. The Badgers didn't really know what to expect. They figured they'd be in the tournament, but weren't sure where or when they'd have to play. But when their name finally popped up during the show, the nerves went away and the excitement took over. I mean, I think there'd be nerves no matter uh, what number you are and what position you are. And so um, that's just to be expected. It's kind of do or die at this moment. But I think there's some nerves, but more just uh, kind of excitement and, and ready to go. I think it's just fun, you know. We're super excited seeing your, um, your name pop up, obviously, and who you're going to play. Just makes everyone excited in the room. And in case you missed it, Dean Hamidi was named Big Ten Wrestling's Freshman of the Year after the Big Ten Championships. In his first year in Madison, Hamidi went 24-2 and this season. Badger teammate Austin Gomez became Wisconsin's first Big Ten champ since 2016. Speaking of champions, Charlotte. Uh-huh. You. <laughs> we got a basketball champ in your household. I do. Our Lady Queen of Peace. Uh, both boys and girls, seventh grade, they won the Maisel That's Championship yesterday so that's big time it is big time so congratulations to both of those teams congratulations to them and just prepared for the cold already down to 29 in madison with wind chills in the upper teens and lower 20s look for a low tonight of about 15 high tomorrow 38 all right thank you all for joining us tonight have a great evening and we'll see you back here at 10.